All right, today we're going to be taking a look at this little solar garden light. Now, this was purchased from a local hardware store for 97 cents. Uh, we bought about 24 of them, and this one was defective right from the factory. So we're going to tear this apart, see if there's anything obviously wrong with it, and just take a look at what kind of circuitry this thing has inside of it. Of course, this also did come with a, another piece of plastic and a stake to put it into the ground. I just pulled this part out because really we're only interested in this part of it. And just as I say that, it starts to uh, work, oddly enough. That's the first time that's worked, but uh, let's take it apart anyway, because it may uh, very well have a loose wire. And I'm kind of curious to see what's inside of it. Screwdriver bit's just a little bit too small for this. It is interesting because it's been sitting upside down on the desk just like this for uh, quite a while and it hasn't kicked in. Oh, I see the problem right now. That spring isn't aligned on the battery contact. And I wonder, let's see here. Nope, it's the other end. When these were new, they had like little orange tabs that you had to pull out before you used it. And I was wondering if that was on the side where the spring was, and it may have pulled the spring off. But it looks like that little spring contact just kind of slid out a little bit. Another interesting thing that I'm noting is that there is water inside this already. I mean, it's been raining for the last couple of days here, but I uh, would have expected these to be sealed a little bit better. So basically, just slide that little spring contact back in, and that should uh, fix it. And if we take a look down in there, We've got our solar panel, it's got two wires coming off of it. So we've got a white and a black wire coming off the solar panel and white and a black wire going to the battery. Our circuit board doesn't have much to it. We'll go ahead and pop the screw out of here. Looks like it just has one chip and then on the other side of the board it looks like it has a little inductor. And there's our LED there. Yep, so we just have a single inductor on the back side of this and that one chip, which I'll try to get the part number for. And the battery that's in this thing is a Gossy Ink battery. It is a nickel metal hydride battery, which is nice since it's uh, not gonna have any memory issues. We've had these lights before with uh, NICADs in them and they don't seem to last too long because of the uh, memory effect that they have. So this guy is a 150 milliamp hour, 1.2 volt AAA battery. So the battery does have quite a low capacity, but you're not really expecting something real high and uh, something like this. Now the light output of something like this just isn't really that high, so it's probably not taking too much current to drive the LED. I'm gonna see if I can't find any information on that chip, and if I can, I'll go ahead and try to reverse engineer the circuit, which shouldn't be too hard considering it only has a couple of components. All right, so I've got a bit more information on this now. So the chip is an XY8018, and that seems to be a fairly common chip in these sort of low-cost garden lights like this. There's not a whole lot to the circuit. The inductor just goes across there, and then the battery and solar panel are connected in here. I've got a better version of this schematic. There's not, uh, not a whole lot to it. So the battery positive and the solar cell positive are both uh, common together. All right, so the little inductor that's on that board is a 470 microhenry inductor, I believe. It's kind of hard to tell what color the last band is, whether it's brown or red, but I believe it's brown. So we're gonna go with 470 microhenries. Um, other than that, there's really not a lot to the circuit. We have the battery, the solar cell, and an LED, and then of course that one chip. And I did manage to find a data sheet for this guy. Unfortunately, it's in Chinese, so it's not particularly useful to us, but what we can see in here is that it has a quoted efficiency, or I believe that this would be efficiency, but shows uh, 80 to 90% for an efficiency number, so fairly efficient little converter. You've probably already thought of this, but we have a three volt LED and a 1.2 volt battery. So we need some way to step up the voltage. And that's of course is where our inductor comes in and we're going to switch that inductor on and off. And this is kind of going to work like a jewel thief. Of course, a jewel thief is kind of a clever little self oscillating circuit. The other information here, if anyone knows how to translate this stuff, I guess uh, you're more than welcome to, but uh, the four pins are labeled, uh, pin number one is LX, pin number two is ground, pin three is CE, and pin four is VDD. 
Not really sure what LX and CE are. Um, of course, VDD is going to be this pin four, that's uh, all the positive, and then pin two is actually the ground pin. So the rest of this data sheet is just example circuits. There seem to be quite a few different ways to configure these chips. Some of them use CDS cells in order to, apparently, well, I'm assuming it's in order to determine when it gets dark out which is, seems a bit redundant because you have the solar cell and then you have the CDS cell. Of course, this is just using the solar cell to tell when it's dark, but there's several different ways that these things can be configured, it looks like. Uh, a lot of these are just minor tweaks. But on the last page of the data sheet, these two circuits are here, and these seem to most closely match what we have. So the only difference between these two circuits is where the switch is placed, uh, but of course, our circuit doesn't have a switch, so if we were to ignore the fact that this was here, which I do believe that these two circuits are completely identical. Of course, mine's been drawn in a different way, but this is basically just one of the example circuits that they have in the data sheet. And then they just have the uh, package information. I'm assuming all these are just dimensions of the, uh, of the chip there. Now, one interesting thing on this is there are a couple of charts on this data sheet one is here and then there's another one up here. Now I'm not entirely sure what these are, but they look to compare, uh, I'm, th I'm thinking that this is input voltage is 2.5, and then the inductor value and current either flowing through the LED or going into the circuit. Uh, of course, in our case, we don't have a 2.5 volt input. We have a essentially 1.25 volt input. We're using a 1.2 volt battery. So I'm assuming that this is the chart that we would want to pay attention to. Basically a few inductors. There's one setup where you can apparently run two LEDs in either parallel or in series. I'm not really sure. I'd assume parallel because it's a higher current. But uh, anyway, the rest of these have one LED. I'm not really sure what the 0307 and the 0410 are on this part. Of course, these are all labeled in Chinese, so I have no idea what they are. But anyway, what these charts are, they're essentially comparing the inductor value to the either input or output current. I'm not sure which. But anyway, the data sheet does show some information on how these chips operate and apparently some suggested component values. All right, so while this thing is apart, I wanna see how much current this pulls to run that little LED, just cause I'm curious. Right now our battery voltage is 1.2. 26 volts, so that's fairly reasonable. And since apparently these guys just slide out, we'll go ahead and pull one of these guys out and we'll just hook our meter in line with that. All right, so now in theory, if I hook up my meter over here, that light should come on and we should be able to see how much power we're drawing. So you can see that our LED is now illuminated and we're drawing roughly 3.5 milliamps out of our battery. So with our 150 milliamp hour battery and running at 3.57 milliamps, it would in theory run for about 42 hours on one charge of that battery. So we went ahead and switched our meter into the microamp range. And one interesting thing is it does seem to have just a little bit of standby current. If I slowly raise the, uh, the solar panel off the desk there, we can see we have about 7.4 microamps of current with the LED off and the solar panel not really generating any electricity. Go ahead and switch this back to the milliamp range and we'll point a really bright light at our solar panel and just see how much current we can get it to uh, put into the battery. Now obviously this isn't sunlight, but we're putting eh, roughly 25 milliamps into the panel at its max. If I put this light right up to the panel goes up to about 40 milliamps. Unfortunately, it's not sunny outside right now, so I can't test it with real sun, but it looks like our panel can put up to about 40 milliamps out or so. And just as one more little experiment, I hooked up the oscilloscope across the LED. As you can see, the circuit is producing a square wave of almost exactly 200 kilohertz, and the peak voltage is about 3.1, maybe 3.2 volts. And that's kind of what you would expect because of course the LED is going to clamp that voltage. So anyway, that gives you a look inside a 97 cent solar garden light. I'm not sure what kind of lifespan something like this is gonna have. Uh, one thing that I would have liked to see on this to, obviously it's a 97 cent thing, so they're not gonna do this, but if this board had conformal coating on it, I think it would probably last a lot longer. Just given by the fact that just after having these things out for a few days, they already had uh, 
quite a bit of water inside of them. Got kind of a neat circuit in it, mostly just because of how simple it is. It's actually kind of crazy how uh, simple something like this can be. Once you start trying to build things down to a price, I guess, you can really cut out most of the components. And of course, that specialized little chip is going to be doing all the work. But anyway, there's the little solar garden light put back together and now fully functioning, it appears. If you like this video, click on the like button. If you want to see more like it, go ahead and click on the subscribe button. If you have any comments or any more information about maybe what some of that Chinese says on the data sheet, I would be happy to know. So you can leave that in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.